All right. Again, Abelardo de la Peña Jr. with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Our third week of En Casa con la Plaza. We have with us today two very special people. First, I'll introduce you to Jimena Martin, our director of, our senior curator, excuse me, of education and programs. And also Maite Gomez Rejon from Art Bites. I'm just going to tell you, tell you a little bit about our series in Casa con la Plaza. We've been doing these now. This is our third week. We've had seven sessions, eight sessions, ranging from Lalo Alcaraz to the history of Cinco de Mayo to a game of Loteria, an online game of Loteria last Friday, a tremendous success. And now we're going to, we're doing presentations, demonstrations, performances, conversations, and today it'll be a, a fantastic demonstration of Sabora Mexico, in which you'll learn a little bit about the cuisine of Northern Mexico. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Walmart and AARP California for making this possible for us to present this to you. You can, of course, ask questions throughout. We have our Q&A open. I'm opening up our chat so that if you'd like, you could drop questions or information or comments on us and uh, we'll be responding as we can. And then also on Facebook Live, as you see, if you're on Facebook Live, is it live? It looks like it's not. I'll fix it. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. It's all you, please. Jimena Martin. Thank you, Alvarado, for the introductions and thank you everybody for coming and joining us today. Special fun. Um, Maite has been with since the very beginning, the start of our culinary travels at La Plaza and with Sabora Mexico. Um, she'll be demonstrating how to do uh, tortillas, but in addition to that, um, a little bit more history behind. Maite, she is the founder of Art Bikes, where she does history, she does lectures, she does cooking classes, all fun stuff. Her BFA from UTA, MFA from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, she has a Grand Diplôme from the French Culinary Institute in New York. Uh, she's been on to the Today Show. Uh, she's done, written for Food and Wine, um, and I guess at KCRW, uh, NPR Splendid Table, and also has contributed to Life and Time. And she's been with us for the past eight years at La Plaza with her Plácticas and her Sabora, uh, where we offer hands-on cooking classes. So without further ado, I pass it on to my compañera, Maite Gómez Rejón. Thank you, Jimena and Abelardo. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I love working with La Plaza, so it's, it's very exciting to be here now, not in La Plaza, but in my kitchen. Um, so this is my first live Zoom class. Um, so I'm very excited to demo of making flour tortillas and also share a little bit about the history of the flour tortilla. Um, I grew up on the border of Texas and Mexico, the Tamaulipas border, and um, I grew up with both, with the corn and the wheat variety. The flour tortillas always had them in the refrigerator. And you know, even after I left home, I have always had a stack of flour tortillas, either in the refrigerator or in the freezer. It's never lacking. Um, and I never really thought about the differences between the two until many years later. And now, of course, I'm obsessed with everything food history. Um, and so sort of just thinking about this and, you know, why Northern Mexico and why weed and what is the significance of this is something that's is so interesting to me. Um, and I know Jimena, you and I were talking earlier, like there's such a resurgence of, of corn and the different, you know, heirloom varieties of corn and a lot of uh, people like Macienda and Colonel of Truth here in LA that are sort of bringing this back. Um, but there's this new trend, I guess, the, the wave of the flour tortilla in LA specifically where we are. And I'm always like, you know, what trend? Like I, this is this is home, this is home food. Um, but it but it's so interesting and it and it goes so far back to the to the period of the conquest. Um, just a little a little backstory. Um, so corn, of course, is the life force of the Americas with so many, you know, religious you know, symbolism with gods and goddesses related to corn. With the 16th century conquest, the Europeans basically saw the similarities between corn and their native wheat, 
which also for the ancient Greeks and Romans and Egyptians, there was the goddess of, of wheat. And then with the beginning of Christianity, wheat became the body of Christ. So of course, they saw the same connotations in corn. So what did they do? They got rid of corn fields to plant wheat fields and convert people to Christianity. So this happened in the 16th century, um, sort of straight off the bat, it became a divider of classes where the wealthy were eating wheat bread and the poor native people were eating corn tortillas. Became a divider of, of classes immediately. And actually the first person to plant, to harvest wheat in Mexico, what they called New Spain at the time, was actually an, an African man, the first, they say he was the first African in Mexico, and he was part of Hernán Cortés's expedition. Um, he was a free man. He was the first person to harvest wheat. He also harvested um, grapes and all sorts of European um, crops. But wheat is the first one, and legend has it, I don't know if this is true, but legend has it that he actually found three, um, three bits of, of wheat in a stack of rice. Um, so, but he was the first person to plant it, and they were planting it in central Mexico at the time. It was the only grain that was acceptable for the Eucharist wafer, and the native people, they were using it to make like basically a flat bread. It's the only way they knew how to do it, to make something like a, like a tortilla, which is actually a word, a Spanish word invented by Spaniards. Um, a little round cake, a little round torta. Um, the actual, the Nahual word for a tortilla that we call tortilla today was actually called tlaxcali, which just means something baked. Um, so the word tor tortilla, so they started sort of, essentially you could think of the flour tortilla as the original fusion cuisine, sort of the original fusion cuisine, which Mexican food, modern Mexican food is a totally a fusion um, cuisine. Eventually, from central Mexico, in Juan Garrido, he planted the first plants um, in what is outside of, of Puebla, of, of, of modern Puebla in, in um, central Mexico. Eventually, the wheat made its way up north, in states like Tamaulipas and Nuevo León, this was brought over by Sephardic Jews. There were a lot of Sephardic Jews that were part of the conquest, um, escaping the Inquisition, and then there was an Inquisition in, Con in Mexico, so they made their way up north, and they were using you know, the wheat to make uh, basically something like matzah, because corn was not a kosher. Um, so that's sort of one way that we start seeing flour tortillas in the northern states like Nuevo León and Tamaulipas. Up closer to where we are, California, Sonora, we start seeing wheat that's being brought by Jesuit missionaries. Um, again, for the Eucharist wafer and then also to make the wheat tortillas that we're so familiar with um, today. So wheat is one of the staples of northern Mexican cuisine. Um, it grew much better in the north than it did in the in central Mexico, just because of the of the climate. Like they? So I interrupt. Yes. Um, no, no. We no, have some no. questions out there. Um, what? This is all great stuff. Can you um, give us some recommendations of where folks can further do some further reading on the history of wheat in Mexico? Definitely. Um, I can actually. Gosh, offhand, I have so many so many things that come to mind, but I'd be happy to send you a list of links mm -hmm. and of books afterwards that you could then forward to right. the Because right if after we're, we're done with the session, uh, we will uh, send everybody who signed up in Zoom um, the ingredients for the recipe to tortillas. And then we'll wait a little bit till you send us a little, like your top three or five. And then we can also add that on so all our uh, Zoom viewers can get the history and also a sweet recipe. I'm sorry, go. No, no, that's great. Yeah, keep the questions, keep the questions mm -hmm. coming, please. Um, but we see, and actually, just going back to, to this, this question, um, Sonora, there's a lot of, you know, heirloom varieties that are being brought back in Sonora. So from Sonora, it arrived 1700s, and then from there, it made its way to California. So a lot of these varieties, just like I mentioned at the beginning, that a lot of so there's this resurgence of finding these like land race corns. The same thing is starting to happen with, um, with wheat. So along with wheat that did so well, and actually today the Northern Mexico uh, grows 45% of all of the wheat that's 
that's grown in that's um, produced in, in Mexico is 45% in the northern states. Um, huge open, you know, vast ranch lands. Um, so along with wheat, also a lot of cattle. So we see a lot of meat. So there's nothing better than a carne asada on our flour tortilla. Um, also a lot of dried beef. I have some right here. This is all I have left. This is like, I guard this with my life. Uh, machacado or machaca, which is um, almost like beef jerky, but it's not the same as sort of the beef jerky. I'll hold it up to for people to see. It's kind of this like um, very, it's like a beautiful cloud. It's like this beautiful sort of salty dried beef. And this is very traditional um, in Tamaulipas, Nuevo León. It's machacado con huevo. It's usually cooked with scrambled eggs with tomato, chile, and onion. Um, I'm convinced, I made this for my husband when we were dating and I'm convinced that this is why he proposed this machacado. Um, there's also in Sonora they prepare a dish called caldillo that's more of a stew that has this dried beef. Um, but this is something that, that's very um, traditional, this sort of dried beef. Um, and also something like the flour tortilla, it's very easy to, to make, basically it's just flour, water, a little bit of salt, some sort of lard or something. So, so with travelers, um, you know, going through these sort of vast areas of land, it's very easy to take some dried beef, dried machaca, and make, it was very, they were, they're very easy and very inexpensive to, you know, to make. Also in Northern Mexico, I would say the flour tortilla, the meat, and we see a lot of cumin that you don't see the spice, this cumin spice, we don't really see it. And, central or southern Mexican cuisine, but you see it a lot in northern Mexico and also in Texas cuisine, sort of uh, Tex-Mex cuisine, um, which was part of Mexico at, at one point. Um, and this is because in the 17th century, there were a lot of Spaniards with Moroccan descent that made their way up along with the Sephardic Jews bringing their spices and cumin was, was one of those, um, was one of those spices. Um, so it's kind of an interesting sort of mix of, of flavors that we don't really see in other places. And I mentioned um, that there, it was really a, a divider of classes. I mean, Mexican food, Mexican history is just so rich and goes, dates back, you know, millennia. But the first printed cookbook doesn't actually appear until 1831. And um, I actually have a copy of it. It's one of my most prized possessions. This is actually a 1909 copy of it. So 1831, three centuries post-conquest, and there is no mention of a tortilla. The only mention of a tortilla in the original 1831 book is a tortilla, is a Spanish tortilla, like an omelet, a tortilla de papa, that's it. It went through various editions. The 1909 is the last uh, edition. And in this copy, and actually I think at the 1888 copy, we first see the mention of the, the tortilla that we're familiar with. But it's quite interesting the way that they, that they talk about it. Um, they explain what a tortilla is and they explain that the corn tortilla is something that the indigenous people used, um, and and but but that now we see them in some of the well-to-do houses, so it's sort of okay to eat, um, and with something that we would never see in a cookbook today. They're just so incredibly um, classist and racist in so many ways, but they also mention the flour tortilla in the same page. So you have the corn tortilla and the flour tortilla, you know, right next to it with little sort of bits of, of history, really showing us that both of these foods, even in central Mexico, were already um, something that people were eating and people were aware of. Um, um, Mike, did you, someone's asking, do you have to recall the name of the African gentleman that first planted wheat in Mexico again, one more time? Juan Garrido. And he was, um, yeah, he was, he was part of Juan Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O. He was part of the expedition that first went to Cuba and Puerto Rico, and then he went back to Spain, and then he made his way. Um, he was part of Hernán Cortés's expedition in, in, in Mexico. And he actually built the first um, chapel for all of the indigenous people that were, that were killed. Um, so he did a lot. 
We also, we got some folks from Florida saying hello, bienvenidos. It's uh, Missy Carmen Cuadra. She's oh, my aunt. Yeah. <laughs> so she's coming so in. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Any other questions? Um, can you please, um, what's the name of the 1909 book again, please? Oh, it's called El Cocinero Mexicano. This one is, um, the original book from 1831 is called El Cocinero Mexicano, and then it went through various editions, um, and the la later editions are called El Nuevo Cocinero Mexicano. So the Nuevo Cocinero has a little bit more, you know, corn, the, the original um, really reads very much like a French, you know, very European style book. Um, this last edition was published both in Paris and in Mexico. So it still has those, you know, flavors, um, but it really is interesting. I mean, I like to read this, it's, it's basically like a history book because you could really see, you know, the, the layers, the complex layers of, of history. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any any questions? Should I start making some tortillas? Tell us. Yeah, we were talking about earlier about um, like the Renaissance with the flour tortillas. You know, I think the first time the whole big thing came with um, with was it uh, tacos mexicali off of Figueroa, where um, Chef es Esras Ochoa was actually going down to Mexicali and bringing those flour tortillas back up to the restaurant. And then again, through um, his restaurant Salazar, they also hand make them there on site, but also with Sonora Town mm -hmm. and then with Home State. And um, just also, we just had with KCRW, we had the Tortilla Fest. Right. That summer. So it was like we had a corn fest and then a flour fest. And we kind of noticed that a lot of the Tex Mex is really talking a lot about the flour tortillas. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know Homestage, they, she does, um, Brianna Valdez, the owner, they're doing sort of the breakfast tacos, you know, the, the flour tortillas, and there's this whole thing between the sort of spongy tortillas and the, mm -hmm. the skinny tortillas, and the big ones or the little ones, sort of depending on the region of northern Mexico. Mm -hmm. But she's doing more of the sort of Tex-Mex stuff, and then there are people like you know, Sonora Town, they're actually bringing all of the wheat that they're using yeah. from Sonora, um, so I have yet to try their, their, I know their, their tacos, I'm dying to, Me but, too. um, but it is interesting how, like we said before, like it sort of comes in waves and right now the wave is the, um, the flour, the, the flour. The wave of everyone's baking and cooking at home. So I did a stab of making my flour tortillas and I think mine were more on the spongier side. Okay. Um, but then again, the whole thing going to the market and not being able to find flour. And so luckily I have a great little Mexican market near the neighborhood and there I found my flower, you know, so it's kind of great, you know, we go to the bigger markets, but also to go back and support our smaller neighborhood markets, the mom and pops. And now they have, you know, you can find everything there. I don't have, I feel a need to go to the bigger markets because A, it's less folks in my little market. And I was able to find my flower, um, my flower to make my spongy tortillas. I wanted them thin, but I just couldn't, I just, it's my first time around, but I'm up for the challenge to try again after your great demo. Well, I haven't quite perfected the really, the really thin tortilla either. But, but it's true. I went to three different stores um, to get flour, and I couldn't find it any. I couldn't find it anywhere. Everybody's baking, you know. Everybody's been, you know, posting not so much tortillas, but their sourdough breads and all of this mm -hmm. on on social media. They're buying all the flour. Um, right. So, but yes, the little markets usually have everything. The little Mexican markets, little ethnic markets all over, that's where I've been going. It's less stress and, and, and definitely you can, you, can, you can find anything. And I think it's just, there's something about, about kneading the dough. There's something very comforting and homey that, and people are home and they just have time. And um, there's this, you know, people are, are, are wanting to have that, have that connection. Mm. Should we start making yeah. some? Should I start making some? Okay, so whoop, put this away. Um, so I'm doing, yeah, so I haven't quite perfected the, the really, um, the really skinny, the really skinny, I like them with the really thin ones. Um, I prefer those to the, to the really spongy tortillas, but I haven't quite perfected the, the technique. Um, one thing I've noticed that it's, 
it's much easier to make a flour tortilla, I think, than a, than a, than a corn tortilla. Um, but you basically only need a handful of ingredients. You just need flour, which I actually have right here. And this I just used um, regular all-purpose uh, regular all-purpose flour. Um, you could certainly use, you know, whole wheat flour or, you know, any sort of other, you know, well, actually not any sort of flour, but whole wheat flour if, you, if you'd want to do that. And actually, the original flour tortilla was probably a whole, a whole wheat, um, was probably whole wheat. Yeah. So I have here two and a half cups of flour, um, one teaspoon of salt, and you can add a little bit more salt if you want and then a little baking powder. And what this does is just makes it, you know, kind of nice and spongy. Perhaps, I haven't tried it yet, if you omit this step, you might be able to get a thinner tortilla. Um, but this does make it a little, just a little softer and, and sort of clap, like a little bit of uh, spongy. So these are basically the, the main ingredients that you need here are flour and salt. You could skip this and many recipes, you know, many recipes do. And then you need, I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit with a, with a fork. So keep the questions coming. What kind of fat are you gonna be using for this? Uh, that is a good question. My fat is right here. I'm using lard. Um, so lard is, the original. Um, the Sephardic Jews up north probably did not use lard. They probably used some or some other fat, but lard is the original um, fat that was used. You always need fat. You can also use, um, you can use vegetable shortening. Um, I find this just, it's more natural. Um, you could use butter. Um, you just need some sort of oil. You could even use olive oil or canola oil if you'd like. I've never really tried it. I've only tried it with vegetable shortening and with um, butter and lard. Um, it's just going to give you a different texture and, of course, a different flavor. If you use butter, it's going to taste amazing, um, but it's just going to be a little bit drier and a little bit more crumbly. The lard is going to give you, the lard is sort of the original, you know, the vegan. So that's what, that's what I'm using. So this is a third of a cup of, of lard that I'm just going to put in there. And then all I'm going to do, just want to make sure that everybody can see what I'm doing. You're just going to, it's basically, you're just going to mix it around. If, um, as if you're just making like a, just a, you're just making a dough, um, kind of to coarse, like to, to crumbs almost. It's gonna look sort of like, like crumbs basically. So, and if in your hands will never be so soft, just so lard, manteca. Ask me more questions if there are, if there are any. We have folks asking about the spices in Northern Western Africa. And I just said that that could probably be a whole other conversation about the Oh yeah. Uh, like, like we talked about earlier, like mole. It's just all these different spices, anjoli, uh, cumin, all the other things that go in there. And then- Oh my God, raisins and plantains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, I mentioned the flour tortilla is the original fusion cuisine. And in many ways it is in its most in sort of its simplest form, but something like mole that has the corn tortilla, it has the chiles, it has the tomato mixed with the sesame seeds and the cinnamon and mm -hmm. those, you know, the raisins and cumin and all of that is old world stuff. So it really is the, the marriage of, of both um, ingredients. I mean, I think fine, and Mexican food is endlessly fascinating because it is really, I think the, the cuisine that really combines all worlds. I mean, it is so incredibly complex, especially the cuisine of sort of the southern regions. I mean, mm -hmm. the northern regions, they don't have the, the diversity of the foods just because the, you know, traditionally, um, just because the weather isn't, it's so hot and, and so dry. Um, but, but it, yeah, it's a spice class. Spice Let's talk about that. There's a bunch of questions going. You go ahead. Um, they were asking if they could use tal or ta well, tallow. Yeah, you could use that, like beef tallow. Yeah, I've actually tried it with beef tallow, and um, it's the flavor is quite is quite strong. Um, I don't I don't love it, 
but it's definitely, I made it actually in a class because we didn't have lard. So we ended up using, actually, we didn't have enough lard. So we did some with beef tallow and some with the pork lard. Um, it, it has a very distinct flavor. Um, I, you know, I, I personally didn't love it, but they, they worked really well. They were a little crispier. We have a question here, um, the brand, your specific brand for lard and also your baking powder that's preferred. Oh, oh my gosh, the brand for lard, I don't even know what it was. I think it was like far, farmer lard. It's a little red box that I got at the, the little Durango, the little market. <laughs> yeah, they're great, right? Like he managed to me and I was like, ah, I'm doing the tortilla cause I don't know, I can't ever find any flour. Um, it's just a farmer's lard. Uh, when I did the previous class um, that I taught that we made, I did a, a, baja, a, a baja cuisine, mm -hmm. and the lard was from, I think they got it at the Santa Monica Farmer's Market. I don't know what brand it is. It was just like in a mason jar. Mm -hmm. um, and the baking soda that I used is a uh, baking powder that I used, whoops, sorry, is Trader Joe's. Okay. Um, it's just Trader Joe's. Yeah, it's just like ba basic. So before I add the next step, I just want to show you can just see that everything is incorporated. It's just like basically crumbs. And I'm going to add a cup of warm water. So you just want to, um, you, you might not need all of the water um, because you, so you want to add it a little bit at a time. It depends on how humid it is where you are. Um, the other day I just put the whole, I made some and put the whole water in and I had to start from scratch. So you I'm just gonna put a little bit at a time and then you just wanna form a very, just a soft dough. You just knead it. Okay. It feels so good to have the warm water. People are asking if you have a cookbook, not a bad idea, my thing. Not yet. Not yet. But I've written about cookbooks a lot. Like I wrote a, um, an essay for the Oxford Research Encyclopedias on the history of, of cookbooks in Mexico. So, so yeah, maybe I, should, I need to write one. Now that, I, now that there's time. That, but right, thank you for asking. Then um, I guess the other, the one in the box, maybe Farmer, Farmer John Lard. Farmer John, that's it. There you go. And then a question here. All, all our mentioned recetas uh, practicas para la señora, 1892. Is that the Josefina Velasquez de Leon or who did that one? I don't know. They're going to ask me. Scroll down. Recetas practicas para la señora. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm familiar. There's a book. Actually, your your, uh, your husband's on here. He says oh, yes. you definitely have a cookbook. All of her cooking is delicious. I have personal. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That is. Sweet. He's in the next room. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Let's that's so sweet. So there, there's um. So this whole idea of like we talk so much about regional. I think I added a little bit too much water, but um, I could feel it a little bit mushy. But um. What was I gonna say? I'm gonna add a little bit more flour just to fix it, but I have another, I have another batch, you know, resting. Um, there was a woman actually in 1898 uh, named Vicenta Torres de Rubio, and she sort of traveled, she had a, a column in Michoacan, a newspaper column, and she basically had people send the, so what I'm doing right now, adding a little bit more water, you need to pay attention and not make it too much. So don't, don't do this when I'm adding a little bit more. Um, but it, it should be okay. Um, so, she, and so she wrote a cookbook called uh, Cocina Michoacana, which basically was all about the regional cuisines of Mexico. Um, so even though in this book that I shared with you, we see the tortilla de harina, or sometimes it's called tortilla de agua, um, which they call it a lot of times in, in Sonora, they call it tortilla de agua as well. They, um, they, so she basically introduced people, say, in, in Merida, of what people were eating in Tijuana. It was a mystery before that. And then there's a woman in the 40s named Josefina Velázquez de León, who was really interesting. She did it as well, and she wrote lots of little books on regional cuisine. And she actually wrote the first cookbook. Can everybody see? So it's starting to look really, really beautiful. It works actually. So you just want to knead it for, I would say maybe like two, three minutes. 
real quick like this, sorry to interrupt you. Um, where no, did you source out the dried beef you mentioned? Oh, that's a good question. I always bring it from home, but there is a place. Where are you located? Are you in LA? Uh, this is a group. Go ahead, just go ahead and shout out. Just where, just where do you get it? Online? Is okay. It in LA? I actually get it from every time that I go home. So if you give me your address, I can make sure I send you some next time. But in LA, there's a place called People's, uh, People's Beef. Um, oh my gosh, hold on a second. I wrote it down. Don't go away. Um, People's, People's Choice, like the People's Choice Award. It's called People's Choice and they're based in downtown LA. They have the, the closest thing to this kind of machaca that I could find in Los Angeles. They make beef jerky. Um, so it, it tastes a little bit more like beef jerky, but it's still, it's, it's good. Um, the, but I haven't quite found, and sometimes if you go to a restaurant and I order machacado con huevo, and it's just shred, like literally like shredded braised beef, it's not quite the machacado. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen it on Amazon. Okay. So, yeah, I have seen it on Amazon, uh, but if you're in L.A., definitely try People's Choice. It's like a family, you know, business, and they have the regular, and then they also have the, with Chile and Limon. Another question about our fats. Um, have you heard of non-hydrogenated -hydro uh, lard? That says um, most commercial manteca is hydrogenated. So I guess I don't. with, um, oh, the, the. It's white, it's people use it for baking. It's a shortening? It's like vegetable shortening. shortening. Would you recommend shortening? Have you tried it with shortening? Yeah, I have. This you could do, um, I've done it. Crisco. With, with, Crisco. Crisco, that's vegetable shortening, yeah. Yeah, so you, and actually the recipe that I, that I sent is, is with either lard or vegetable shortening. Um, those are usually the, the main recipes that you see, and yeah, it works fine. With, yeah, it, it totally works fine. I um, prefer lard only because it feels more natural, but if you're, you know, vegetarian or, you know, for whatever reason you don't want to use lard, then it's going to be, it's going to be totally fine. So here I have my little, my beautiful soft, you know, dough. And now what I'm going to do is just, so this recipe, it's two and a half uh, cups of flour and you can make, I've been making like 12 uh, tortillas, so about the size of Maybe about the size of a golf ball. So you just sort of um, make just little, just little balls. Maite, could you ask, um, I had a question here. Please repeat the name and publication of your article. Like oh, it's called Mexico's Early Cookbooks, not very creative title. And it's in the Oxford Research Encyclopedia of Latin American History. Okay. And I list lots of really Lots of really cool, um, lots of really cool cookbooks in there. Um, so I'm just making these little, these little guys. And what I want to do now, and, and you know, for those of you following along at home, so I'm gonna, I'm trying to make them about the same size. Um, what we want to do this step since it's flour and has, you know, gluten and I've been kneading it, it kind of goes like this. So it just kind of needs to relax again so that it can, so that you can make some sort of soft, um, soft dough. So it's not gonna be too tough. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put them back in this bowl. And what you wanna do is you wanna let them rest. If you're following along at home, maybe make a couple with me now um, and then save the rest for later so that you could see so you see if you could taste the difference um, but just gonna set these little guys to the side how long would those if I'm not ready to roll them out right just right now how long can they sit in the bowl as it's covered oh you know that's a good question I've kept them for like a day but I think that you're probably you're probably fine for a day or two, I would imagine. Yeah, I think it's fine. Also, would it be okay if some folks are asking of butter? You can use butter. Yeah, right you can. Here. Yeah, you could definitely use butter. You could use any sort of fat. You could use oil. Um, you could definitely use butter. It's going to be the 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 tortillas are going to be more um, more. What do you call it? More crumbly. They're going to taste extraordinary because butter, of course. Um, but yes, you could certainly use butter. What about ghee? Oi. <laughs> probably 
That's a good question. Yeah, it'll probably give it an interesting sort of Indian, you know, flair. I've honestly never tried it. Yeah. Um, so I can't really say. I, I had a bad experience with ghee once, but um, I, w I, don't, I, I don't know. I would just say try it. I wish I, I, wish I had that answer. That one I don't know. Also, don't. Um, what's really hot, not coconut oil. Oh, coconut oil. You could probably make it with coconut oil. I, I can't see why you would not be able to make it with coconut oil or with ghee because it's essentially, it's a fat, which is what you need. Oh, here we go. If you can cook with another Mexican chef at home, who would it be? Mm. I love Patti Hinich. Um, yeah, I love her. I think Daniela Sotines from Atla in New York. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Um, those two. Oh gosh, but then there's, I don't know, there's so many, but those are the two people that come to mind just because they just seem like, um, fun and, um, and just cool. But yeah, I like what they're doing and, and, and um, sort of introducing, you know, Mexican food to an American audience and, and, um, and not, watering it down it's, it's like really good sort of authentic and they know what they're talking about and they know what they're doing and they're passionate about it so that i i'm i i really i value here are my little these are called pestelas so here are my little guys and you could see how sort of pretty they are um one thing with the flour tortilla to get them thin i mean with the with the um corn, you use, you know, a, a corn, um, a tortilla press, which doesn't really work with the flour tortillas because it's too, it, it's too thick. The tortilla will be too thick and you want to get it really, really um, nice and thin or as thin as you, as you can. So I let these rest, you want to let them rest for 30 minutes. Um, at least 30 minutes. Um, if you know, you could let them rest for 10 minutes. The longer you let them rest, the better. But so I would say 30 minutes. Um, it's, it's, it's an important step. Um, these I probably made, what time is it now? 30, I probably made these about maybe a couple of hours ago. So they've been resting for a couple of hours. Cover. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it out. And I have my, um, my comal here. And I'm going to just put it in medium high heat while I start rolling them out. And you, if you don't have a, if you don't have a, a skillet like this, a comal, you can use uh, just a, a, a pan. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's dry. You don't wanna put any oil on it. You don't wanna put anything. You just wanna dry pan. Yeah, I did my tortillas thinking I was saving time by with a tortilla press. And Does then really press, and then they get close. Yeah, it and get close. So you really yeah. need to put some elbow grease. So you do. I think it's it's a good starter to get them flattened. But at the end of the day, you really need to finish polishing them off with the um with the roller with the with a rolling pin. Definitely, I'll I'll try one with the with the tortilla press so that you could see. Um, can every can everybody see? Okay. Yeah. The coma. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna just put my little guy down and put a little bit of flour. And I was making some the other day and my husband was like, are these supposed to be round? So I'm not very good at making them round, but I do my best. So you basically just kind of roll them a little bit and then turn them halfway and then just keep going. And you can see I'm starting to get to make it a little square because circles are overrated. But um, there you go. If the thinner the end, the thinner. You can also um, I can kind of see my um, this is a really huge one, but the underneath I could kind of see the black you know counter underneath. Um, I don't know if you could notice if you could see right right over here. I have a sheet pan with lots of little pieces of parchment paper. If you are going to freeze them, um, you want to basically put the, put them just like this, like the raw tortilla. Put them on a little piece of parchment paper and freeze them 
So freeze them individually and then you can stack them and they'll be fine for months in the refrigerator. How long would it take to, so if I stack them up and I freeze them, um, do, how long would that take them out to defrost or can I put them on the comal right out of the freezer? I would wait, maybe, they're so thin and it's gonna take maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes. It's not gonna take long at all to defrost. Or you could cook them, keep them refrigerated. They, these are gonna last, Um, these are gonna last in the fridge probably about a week cooked. Um, so you can cook them. And so you can um, cook them, keep them refrigerated, and then if you want to heat them up, just just put them on the on the dry pan, dry skillet for um, for like I don't know 20 seconds or so on each side. Look at that. That's what you want, little bubbles like that. Is it better if I um, put the camera here? Yeah, go see them. Yeah, so you can see them. Um, what else, what other questions? The, uh, someone said that the grandma would suggest turning and rolling at 45 degrees. Okay. They're turning the tortilla. And then can you share any info on the history of uh, birote sourdough? Of what sourdough? Uh, birote. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Let's see. Birote sourdough. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Let's see. It's Rita. Let me write to Rita real quick. Look at that. Oy. That's something. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Yum. Um, okay. Rita, she says it's, I've had it here in San Antonio at La Panaderia. Oh, okay. Pirote o bolillo? Or bolillo, the, the bread. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never heard the word uh, pirote. A bolillo is, yeah, it's like a, like a little, a little bolillo, like a little, little piece of bread. Like, uh, the history of that, that uh, that's a whole, uh, that's, the history of bread in Mexico is, is, look at this. I'm so excited right now. That is a beautiful bubble. I think she said that birote, she thinks it's from Jalisco. But then again, that could be another conversation of different types of breads and pastries. Um, Definitely. Well, the bread, the whole idea, the, the breads in, in Mexico. So what did they say? 45, 45 degrees, but not flipping the tortilla? Yeah, let me see here. This looks pretty good, actually, round like this. Okay, my well and my mama would would turn the rolling pin 45 degrees opposed to turning the actual tortilla. Okay, okay, that's what I did with this one. It looks better. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the 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 bread. So, so basically, the whole wheat, and it became a divider of classes. And there were different, um, different. Uh, so, I'm, what I'm going to do right now is while these are are ready, I'm just going to put them in my in my little tortilla while well, they're, you know, they're nice and and warm and then you could use these you know to make look at that Oy. to make um quesadillas or machacada or what, whatever but they had like different there was a hierarchy of of wheat bread in mexico so there was like the the more sort of refined white flour made the more sort of fancy bolillos mm -hmm. and then the less refined and the stuff that was mixed with other things so there was the, the different um different levels of uh, sort of classes that would eat them. But when, when um, Mexico became independent from Spain, we see this sort of wave of the sort of fr a French, you know, wave, especially um, when Porfirio Diaz was president. He was such a, he was from Oaxaca, but he was a total Francophile. So we see a lot of bakeries spring up in Mexico. So we start seeing bolillos. Um, and so, and it becomes very, very much, in, you know, part of, of you know, bread, pan dulce in Mexico, it's such a such an important part, you know, of the culture. Um, but we see really inventive uh, shapes and names of bread, like the marranos or, and yeah. panadería in San Antonio, they, they're amazing and they have so many interesting, you know, flavors, but they are called different things depending yeah, on the, the region. Pirote, pan blanco, or bolillo. Or bolillo, okay. I've only heard of the bolillo, the name bolillo. Okay, someone's asking, what is the bag that she, where you're putting in the tortillas in? 
It's a tortilla holder. Tortilla holder. Okay. Yeah, it's a little, it's literally, it's a bag and its sole purpose is for holding uh, tortillas. And this, I think this one is from, I think this one is from Morelia, from Michoacan. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit because I can see that my tortillas are really smoking a lot. So I'm just gonna lower the heat a Here's little bit. Here's a good question. This is a debate um, in Melissa's house whether it's a pop or not to pop the tortilla while it's baking. What's, oh. does it make a difference? I don't, I like to see the bubbles, but we can pop one and see what happens. I, I like to leave them. Yeah, I like to leave them. Why pop them? They're so pretty. Right? Yeah. This one burn. That one burn. Left it a little bit too long. So you want to cook them about 30 seconds on each side. So we can pretend that this one didn't, this one didn't happen. We can, we can keep going. So yeah, you want to do about 30 seconds on each side. Anything else? So far so good, you keep going. Keep going, okay. So my husband in the next room is gonna be very happy about mm -hmm. these tortillas. Um, so yeah, so, so, so the whole wheat, I mean, cause there is the tortilla, which was sort of the, the, most, um, the most basic, um, which only has sort of a limited number of ingredients, but then, you know, the bakeries in Mexico are a whole, our whole thing and, and uh, different, you know, bakeries in different regions. My grandmother, actually, my um, paternal grandmother, she was from Yucatan and opened up a bakery in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, called um, Panificadora Yucatan, and they would sell bread specifically from from Yucatan. Um, so introducing this sort of bread here, so. So there, there are different, um, and sometimes it's the same bread with a different name, mm -hmm. just like the, you know, they've never heard of that, but so it's quite, it's, it's really, every region has its, mm -hmm. has its thing. Switching that time. Anything else? Here so we here go. we have. Uh, virote is more like a small French bread, hard crust back in the fifties and, and before is what we commonly knew it by here in East LA bakeries. Oh, okay. Bolillo is a softer roll, but now it's a uh, common name is it for rolls. For rolls, yeah. It's like a bread roll, a bolillo. Then yeah. another question is, can you use a dishcloth to press them down and it should not pop the bubble? A dishcloth? A dishcloth. I guess what it's puffing. Instead of like poking it, I guess get a dishcloth to, to flatten it. We can try it. Never really. Because you can use a dishcloth to press them down and it should not pop the bubble. Okay. Let's see. So just press it gently or just, yeah? I guess gently, so see it says. Oh, there you go. Yes, it's nice and gentle. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, I wanted to try, um, to try one with the tortilla press just so that you could, just so that you could see. Um, so, I'm gonna flip this guy over. So I have these two just little pieces of parchment paper that I'm gonna put on there so it doesn't stick. And this, if this were a flour uh, corn tortilla, it would come out and I'm pressing as much as I can. And it's beautifully round, but it's not. It's not as thin. Yeah, no, and it, and it, it's not shrinks, as thin. shrinks back. Also, yeah. have you heard the book uh, Tortillas, A Culture History by Paula Morton? No, I don't know that book. Okay. I need to get it. Uh, I'll write it down to I'll my, say, I need to send links and then get, and then get links back. So yeah, I'm just gonna, so yeah, so you can start with the press and then get them a little bit thinner. And these are great, I mean, tortillas de harina, they're great for quesadillas, they're great for, you know, carne asada, um, burritos, because they're, they're, um, they're, pretty, they're pretty sturdy, but they're not good for something like enchiladas. Um, even though they're, they're, they're strong, um, they're, they're, not, they're gonna fall apart with a lot of sauce. Um, so you, the, like if you can make something like enchiladas or mole or something like that, that's like a heavy sauce, you definitely need corn. Um, 
it's just it's just um, it's just gonna hold up better. Someone also suggested when we're you know besides the the cloth to push down is also to use a moist paper towel. Okay. Give that a try. Okay. Okay. What, okay. Now I've got another question here. What makes corn flour incompatible with this recipe? You would make corn um, corn tortillas. Corn tortillas, right? Yeah. Just a corn tortilla. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just yeah the wheat wheat flour versus um, yeah. versus corn flour. corn tortillas yeah which is just they're both equally delicious mm -hmm. and authentic and just used for different just for different purposes mm -hmm. you know sometimes I crave one over the other and these are so I mean they're really easy to make um, and this is definitely something that you just can just have you know in your in your freezer, in your fridge, to just throw it. it makes it, it's like a, a such such an easy kind of quick lunch. It's like a quesadilla or breakfast. Put some scrambled eggs and you know, put them in there. It's just such an easy, um, just such an easy uh, thing to to make. And if you sort of this batch makes twelve, which is which is quite a bit. Um, you can freeze them. You always have first of the. Uh, in your in your freezer and no preservatives. It's much better than whatever you can buy in the better. in the store. And I think I said it, but these um, already cooked. They'll be they'll be good um, probably for about a week. It's not going to last as long as store bought, of course, because it, it doesn't have any preservatives. But um, but it'll they'll last about a week in the fridge. Just put them in a Ziploc. Just make sure that they that they are um, completely cool when you put them away, and just stick them in a. In a okay, we have about three more minutes or so. Any three? Any more questions? Um, okay, they were asking again: baking powder or baking soda? But you use baking powder, right? Baking powder. Yes, it's baking powder. Thank you. Okay, there it goes. There. I wish you all could come over and help me eat all of these tortillas. Oh, great, great. And how long have you been making flour tortillas? I've been eating them my whole life. Um, I've been making them, I think for a while, like when I, when I have a craving and I don't have them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something that I've been making regularly, that I make regularly up until just sort of recently that, you know, or when, when I don't have them and I make, you know, if I, if I don't have them and I have a craving, then I'll make them. Um, I would say a few years, but. It's, I just tried now. I've been you so, what? Yeah. But not that often, but not, not often, not often enough to make, you know, the perfectly square or to really sort of perfect the, the technique. Mm -hmm. um, but sure, I think more, you know, lately that there is this, sort of interest in flour tortillas. It has got me kind of thinking about it more and talking and think, you know, talking about them and, and um, they're so, they're so good. They taste like home. I remember one of my favorite ways to eat them are just with butter and sugar. And these you can even fry, add a little cinnamon sugar and make some blue I show up your tortilla holder again. And then they were asking like why their, I guess some folks are making tortillas as we go, why their tortillas didn't puff? Oh, they should puff. Maybe the pan wasn't hot enough. Yeah. And then there's a double check, should we add baking powder to the flour at the same time as the salt? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fine. It's all mm -hmm. together. Okay. I think we're almost good. Any parting words? Any last tips that we didn't weren't able to discuss today? Um, last tips. Well, main tip to let it rest. That's a that's an important tip to let it rest. Um, and when you're freezing them, to put you know freeze them in, in layers and have make sure each individual that be yes frozen before you stack them and you know put them in a ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. What else? If you don't have a tortilla holder, you could use a, a rag. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I hope you make them and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. It's always a pleasure working with you, Maite. I look Thank you, Jimena. Again. Now I'm going to pass it off to our amazing Averaldo. Hola, everybody. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jimena. Thank you, Maite. They look delicious. We wish that you could, we could join you and put some mantequilla <laughs> on them and roll them up. And that's my, uh, uh, that's my comfort food. Anyway. I know it is. Uh, weakness. It's your weakness. It's my weakness and, and it's my, oh, it charges me and it makes, oh, anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. your, for everybody's comments, your questions. Uh, on Facebook Live, we really enjoy, uh, we have so many, and I try to move them over to our chat on Zoom. Uh, and that's it for today, unfortunately. But we'll, hopefully we're gonna see Maite again soon. Uh, in the meantime, this Wednesday, we have a great show for you. If you like documentaries, this is our En Casa Con La Plaza Zoom sessions on Zoom and Facebook Live. We will have uh, Philip Rodriguez, a documentarian who did a documentary a couple years ago on Oscar Seta Acosta, also known as the Brown Buffalo, very important in the Chicano movement. Also a, on Ruben Salazar, the man in the middle, a documentarian about the great Chicano journalist who was unfortunately uh, fallecido during the Chicano moratorium almost 50 years ago. And then on Friday, we have the fabulous Dan Guerrero. If you don't know Dan, you got to come on down at 7 o'clock on uh, Facebook Live and also on Zoom, and he will entertain you, to say the least. Yes. But in the meantime, you could see our past Zoom sessions. If you go to our website, lapca.org, lapca.org, and there's two, there's one on the upcoming sessions and then there's our archive sessions where you could see Gustavo, you could see the librarians from the LA Public Library, Dr. David Hayes Bautista, Jocelyn Ramirez from Todo Verde who showed us how to make bacon, uh, pipian rojo last week and next week during En Casa Con La Plaza Cocina, which is our Monday sessions, which Jimena will be hosting, uh, we're gonna meet Tirsa Farah of Tirsa's Mexican Cafe, pretty close to where we're at, at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, right off of Sunset, and I think it's Figueroa. And she's gonna show us, she's gonna uh, bring the rice, bring the rice, she's gonna talk about Mexican rice and also cilantro lime rice. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. But stay tuned to our Facebook pages, at La Plaza LA, Twitter at La Plaza LA, Instagram at La Plaza LA, YouTube at La Plaza LA, but most important, come and check us out. Hang out with us for a, an hour or two. We might have to stretch these out because they're so interesting. Uh, and uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on Tuesdays and sometimes on Thursdays, but come on down. And Tigrillo, please be more polite next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody, and we'll see you Thank soon. You Thank you, my thing. Thank, thank you so much. And thank you. Again, thank you again to our sponsors, AARP California and Walmart. Thank you for your support and bringing these to, from our community to your community. All right. Adios Gracias. a Bye. todos. Nos vemos. Thank you.